Hey, I'm Melissa Shannon, founder of Digital Scrapbooking HQ.com, and today I'm here with another Photoshop Elements tutorial. G'day, I'm Melissa Shannon, founder of Digital Scrapbooking HQ.com, and I'm here with you in Adobe Photoshop Elements 2020. And I just wanted to walk you through how you can get started editing a photo in Photoshop Elements. When you first open Photoshop Elements 2020, you will have this welcome screen. And that will allow you to get access to some tutorials and links through to try new things in Photoshop Elements. You can click on any of these cards to see what you can do. At the bottom left, we've got auto creations based on the previous catalog you've opened in the organizer. Or when you first start, you'll see an option to let Photoshop Elements know what version of Photoshop Elements you've used before so it can tell you about the upgrades. When we come to edit a photo, we click on the photo editor. You'd see listed below these three options, there are our recent files. So we have the organizer, which is where you organize your photos, the photo editor, which is where you edit your photos and the video editor, which is called Premiere Elements. And that is where you edit your videos. So let's click on photo editor. So here is the editor. Whatever editing mode you've last used, that's what you'll start with. So probably the first time you open, it'll be set to quick mode, but it's just a click of the button to go between quick, guided, and expert mode. Now you don't have to be an expert to use expert mode, but for this video, I'm just going to show you the basics in quick edit mode. We just click to open a photograph and let's choose this photo. This is a photo of my daughters at a test match at the Perth Stadium. So the first thing we want to do with this photo is we will just use this top button to zoom out a bit. So we'll click on the minus to zoom out so we can see the whole picture. You can also drag the slider to fill the photo, fill the editing area with the photo. When I'm working in quick mode, I like to do before and after so that I can see my original photo and see how things have been improved. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to make some quick edits here. I'm going to grab this spot healing tool and I'm just going to zoom in. Oops, zoom in with a zoom and I'm going to you know, fix up and get rid of that random pile of rope. Just for an example to show you how that works. We're going to try and level this photo. We're going to straighten it by clicking on the straighten tool and drawing a straight line. You can also draw the straight line vertically. There we go. Now Everything's nice and straight. Now we can click on the Smart Fix to see if any of these are going to improve the look of the photo. I usually click on Auto to see how that looks. You can also mouse over these little thumbnails to see the improvements you can make. Pretty happy with how that looks. So I'm going to save my work. I save it as a Photoshop document and I can save it as a JPEG later if I want to print it. You, apart from adjustments, you also can add effects, textures and frames to your photographs. Most of these effects are more just for fun.
And if you want to undo anything, you can click on the undo button at the bottom of the screen. If you want to completely reset your image, you also have that option at the top here. You could also add some texture. I'll just show you how that looks. To your photograph or you can add a frame. I tend to prefer to make my own frames so I don't tend to use those options but they're there if you'd like to give it a go. To show you a couple of other features, I'm going to open up more of a portrait style photograph. Okay, so here we have an image that um, is of Lucy, again, ready for the cricket. And let's zoom in on her face so we can show you how we can use some of these other features. So first we have the zoom tool, which we've already looked at. We can use that to zoom in on our image. We've got the hand tool that you can use to move around in your image and it moves the before image and the after image. Then we have quick selection tool if you just want to apply, um, you know, some changes to just a selection and it automatically will be able to, you know, just select Lucy and leave the background mostly as is, depending on how detailed you are. You can learn more about Quick Select on my website which is digital scrapbookinghq.com. Then we've got our eye tool. Now the eye tool has red eye removal. We don't have red eye in this photo but what it does have is open closed eyes. So her eyes aren't really super closed but I had another photo from the same day that her eyes were brighter in. You can just click and browse to another photo. I'm just gonna click to apply and you can see before, after. Lucy's same eyes, but better. So we'll click okay. Now, if you don't have a photo already selected, Open closed eyes will just s suggest some kind of stock standard um, photos there. And you can choose the one that looks best with your photo. But in our case, I'm just going to stick with the Lucy's actual eyes. So that looks really quite good. Then I'm going to zoom back out um, so I can see the whole image. don't think I need to really do any straightening here. That's all pretty good. We don't really have any spot healing to do. I guess we can just show you this tool with that um, little door stop here. So we'll just use the spot healing tool to get rid of that door stop. Generally with spot healing tools, you do want to do smaller areas and you can continue to go over and over the same area with content aware fill and it will gradually grow smarter. That's looking pretty good. So we have the straighten tool, which I showed you before. We've got white and teeth. Shall we give that a go? Why not? Let's uh, whiten those teeth. So all you do is you just drag along the tooth area or you can just click on each individual tooth. And if you're having trouble getting the teeth exactly selected, you can always resize the brush to work better for a larger or smaller photograph. We can add some text here. When you use the text or type tool, just click and drag to create a text box and that allows you to type lots of journaling in there. 
would suggest that you, if you can't see your type, it's probably very small. So you can increase the size. And if you want to go bigger than 72, you can either type it in here or you can just click once and type along. Again, we can adjust the text, the font and the size and color as you would in Word or any other text editing program and then you can also click and drag to resize it. The final tool we have to show you today is the crop tool. Now the crop tool by default will suggest a crop that it thinks is good but you can always resize that crop and get it looking exactly how you like. I'm going to crop out that um, light switch and also the little bit of the doormat. So let's click our photo looks quite different and a bit of an Im and a bit of an improvement you can always stop right there or you can um, continue on with expert mode and here you can see that some of the alterations we've done in the quick edit mode come in as separate layers that you can turn on and off with the eye icon you can continue to edit to your heart's content. But if you wanted to print this photo, you can also click save as to save it as a JPEG file. You wanna save it as high quality for printing and you can always go back into the guided edit mode or the quick edit mode to do more adjustments as needed. Thanks so much for joining me for this little walkthrough of the quick edit mode in Photoshop Elements Editor. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you'd like to learn more about digital scrapbooking or Photoshop elements, head to digitalscrapbookinghq.com.